Hey YouTube, it's your girl, Dr. J, and it has been a minute, but I was inspired to come and do a quick video on my take on quarantine schooling. So for those who are new to my channel, I'm Dr. J, and I have been homeschooling my three kids for the past nine years, and we plan on continuing to homeschool through all of their high school graduations. In addition to being a homeschooler, I am also a full-time faculty member for a university. And so I teach and I homeschool. And um, I know that there's been a lot of discussion about, you know, how do you homeschool and work full-time? And so I may do some videos on homeschooling and working full-time in the future if I have some folks who are interested in seeing that type of video. But for now, I wanted to talk about five key factors I think it's important for us to keep in mind while we are all having this quarantine schooling experience. Point number one, and this is I think a big one. Quarantine schooling is not homeschooling and we are all quarantine schooling at least those of us in the United States, we're all quarantine schooling at this time. So why am I making a distinction between quarantine schooling and homeschooling? The reason is because I think calling it quarantine schooling allows us all to understand that this is a crazy experience for everyone. One of the things that I try to encourage the my friends in real life who traditionally school their kids and we're now asked to quarantine school their kids, is that this is not what homeschooling looks like. I know, like a, a lot of people, this is their first time educating their kids in the home environment since their kids have probably been in preschool. And it's not the most fun experience. And I want people to know that it's not a fun experience for us who have been traditionally homeschooling as well. My homeschool changed completely when my state went on lockdown. So that meant that all of our extracurricular activities were gone. My son, uh, my oldest son, who is a high schooler, is on a robotics team for a local high school. That was gone. And that was gone four days before they were supposed to leave for their robotics competition. My twins, are active in Taekwondo. My daughter was in dance. The kids were getting ready for science. We're like all of these things. We left our house seven days a week for an educational or extracurricular activity. And all of those things went completely away in about a week's time. And so when people started to call quarantine schooling, homeschooling, that kind of concerned me because we not home this much and most homeschoolers that I know are never in the house this much. And I also wanted people to know that just like this was a new experience for them who their kids were usually going to a traditional school setting, whether that be a public school, private school or boarding school, it was a new experience for us as well. Even though our children were being ed educated in a home environment, that didn't mean that we were always at home particularly all throughout the day. And that's for kids from preschool all the way up through high school. So quarantine schooling is different from homeschooling and it's different for all of us. This is crazy for everybody all together. Point number two. In the United States, there are approximately zero experts in quarantine schooling. This is something that we have never before seen as a country where virtually the entire country is now educating their kids from home. That does not happen. It has never happened. And I know my state, I'm in Alabama, we've been on lockdown orders for about three to four weeks. I know New York and California and some other states were a little bit before us up to four weeks before us a couple people went on lockdown a week or so after us but the point is no one has been quarantine schooling for more than about seven to eight weeks so there are no experts 
that means that we are all learning We're all feeling our way through this. We're all learning together. So don't feel like you have to do it a certain way. And definitely don't feel like you're doing it wrong because this is new for everyone. And please don't let anyone think that or tell you that they have the answer to exactly how you should be doing this. Because one of the things that we do know in traditional homeschooling is that every house is different and every home environment is different. And that's the same for a quarantine school environment as well. Everyone is having a very different experience. I know for a lot of people, not only is this their first time educating their children in a tradition in their home when they were traditionally schooled, it's their first time working from home as well. I have always been working from home full time since I've been homeschooling my kids. And so um, it, there wasn't a big change for me in as far as how I did my work. My children experienced significantly more change in their day than I did when we went on lockdown. However, my situation became very different because my husband has been working from home since our state went on lockdown. And so that created a very different dynamic in our home because we want to make sure that we're being respectful of him. So if he's in a meeting and he has to close his office door, that means that it's not the time for the physical science experiment where you got to light something on fire, which is something that my middle schoolers have had to do. So we kind of like let let that go for a little bit and also balancing every the time that everybody is online because he's online more, I'm online because of my job and my kids had already been taking some online courses. So that upped the use of our Wi-Fi and different things like that. So there's all these different adjustments that everybody's trying to make. So everyone's experience is going to be completely different. There are no experts in this journey. Point number three, it's okay to let your kids and yourself grieve about experiences that have been lost. I get it, we are all so lucky or blessed or however you wanna frame it, that we're healthy and we're able to do this and we know that some people are not having this experience. There are some people who are sick right now There are some people who are hospitalized. There are some people who have lost loved ones from this very severe issue. And we understand that when that's not our situation, we should be absolutely grateful for it. That doesn't mean that we also have to be machines and act as if it doesn't hurt that there have been some other types of loss. No, they're not as deep as losing your health or losing your job or losing your life. But I allow my kids to be sad about the fact that they had planned for a science fair for a year, including one of my kids collecting data for 105 days straight, only for science fair, the regional science fair, to be canceled three days before they were supposed to go. So they had worked an entire year and three days before the event, it was canceled. Or my son who was on the robotics team, who was getting ready and packing and and all excited about going to robotics competition and four days before they were supposed to make their trip, it was canceled. Or my daughter who won a national science competition and the banquet was canceled before the event ever took place. And my kids miss their friends. They miss, uh, my daughter was her dance troupe. They were getting ready for dance recital. It's not gonna happen. My, um, both the twins, my daughter and um, her twin brother, they do Taekwondo. They haven't been able to see their friends there or do their Taekwondo classes for a month. And it's, there's no end in sight. And so everyone has had these different losses. I was working on my third book. We were set to go to Washington, D.C., where I was going to be going to the Smithsonian's African American History Museum to do some research for the book. And that trip got canceled. So the book is delayed for I don't know how long. It's definitely not going to come out in 2020. Maybe it'll come out in 2021. 
I don't know. It'll depend on how how long this lasts. So everybody is has had to lose a little bit of something and it's okay for us to grieve about those losses. Yes, we're going to absolutely be respectful of the fact that we have our health, that we're able to go through this together as a family. I know that the experience that my family is having is from a place of privilege because my husband and I were both able to keep our jobs through this. And we're both able to work from home when there are people who have to endanger their lives every day because they're essential employees, whether they work in a hospital or a grocery store or they're delivering mail or they're delivering packages. And we are so grateful for the work that they're doing. And we're also allowing ourselves to be a little bit sad, not stay in that sadness, but acknowledge that it's sad that some of the things that we have planned, we don't get to do. The thing that we do is we don't stay there and we don't dwell there. We grieve, we mourn, and we move on because we know what's going to get better. But I think that especially when you have kids that were looking forward to things, you, we have to allow them an opportunity to have a safe space to say, this sucks <laughs> because you know what? It does. It really does. So point number four, it is going to get better. I think that is something that we have to make sure we're encouraging our kids about, we're encouraging ourselves about. This situation, no matter how much it sucks, it is temporary. And at some point, we are all going to be released from our self-quarantine and even, you know whether or not you know you release on the early side or your state is a little bit more it's going to have you quarantine a little bit longer no matter your personal family choices um we're going to see an other side of this i know my state is talking about opening up um within the next week or so my family will be continuing to um, self-quarantine for longer than that because we want to make sure that we are being as healthy as possible and we are being as respectful as possible for those who may have compromised immune systems or who may have pre-existing conditions and so we are still committed to flattening the curve as much as possible so we're gonna be in the house for a few more weeks but we know at some point it's going to be okay for us to go about a little bit more. We are so excited for the day that the kids are going to be able to hug their friends who they miss. They miss their friends. Like I think I said before, we were leaving the house seven days a week and we, we're not doing that right now. So we're all looking forward to the day when we can see our friends, see our family, go out and just do something just fun and have no guilt. You know, <laughs> gonna go to Top Golf, go to the movies, or go to the arcade, or do something crazy and not have any guilt about it. And we're looking forward to that. And that's one thing I've tried to really encourage my kids to do. Think about the things that we're going to do on the other side of this and to be encouraged that this is something that we're going to we're going through as a country we're going through as as the entire world is having this experience um whether a little bit or a lot whether they're you know it's they're now on the other side of the curve or going into it we're all kind of collectively experiencing this and we all will breathe a collective sigh of relief when we get on the other side of this and we will and i think that one thing that I've been trying to do is really to help my kids focus on that. What are we going to do when we get on the other side? Because we are going to get on the other side of this. And point number five. This is a historic time. And no one has been through it like this before. And this is a wonderful time to take stock of the things that you have, the relationships that you cherish. And it's a good time to use that time that you're not commuting or sitting in the school car line or being what I call mom Uber or anything like that. All those hours that you're saving, spend those 
as much as possible reaching out to friends and family who maybe you can't see and letting them know that you miss them. I think that's been the thing that I realized the most from this experience. I was taking so many encounters with people that I love for granted and I didn't realize how much I missed them until I couldn't see them. It was just like, oh yeah, our kids do this together. We're just gonna, you know, I know I'm gonna see them every week. I know I'm gonna see them twice a week. Or even my um, family members, um, we live, we only live like five minutes away from my in-laws and we have intentionally not gone to see them. They're older and so we didn't wanna risk their health. And it's like, man, we miss them, you know, we call them, we reach out to them, the kids FaceTime with their grandparents, call my mom a lot. My sisters and I talk so much more than we used to. And so that's one of the things that I'm learning from this experience. And I hope you get an opportunity to see as well that there are so many people that you love even that just you like, you don't even got to love them. You just like them and they make your day so much better. And I hope that we all learn from this to just take, to let people know how much they mean to us and how much they brighten our day and how much being a part of our lives, how much they, it, it means to us that they are a part of our lives and how much our lives are better because they are a part of it. And embracing the technology that we have well y'all this could be you know 1900 and we wouldn't have facetime and skype and youtube and all that other sort of stuff we have those things we can reach out like yeah let your kids make some videos <laughs> for their grandparents or reach out to your siblings or tell that person who you've been you know putting it off that you're sorry or that you miss some and all that other sort of good stuff because and let's make this a part of quarantine schooling as well I know one of the projects that I'm going to be doing with my kids, their teens and tweens, I want them to start building up their um, uh, uh, address books because um, my eldest is going to be going off for college um, soon. And um, his brother and sister won't be that far behind them. I mean, I'm going to be an empty nester in five years. And so, um, like, building up <laughs> that address book and say okay well you know what is what is grandma's address and what is great grandma's phone number and those sort of things so just you know finding ways to connect with people who we maybe you know are oftentimes too busy to do like hone those writing skills by letting them write a letter to their aunt or uncle or grandpa or grandma or great grandpa or great grandma and and their friends, you know, like, okay, texting is cool, but, you know, let's do a little righty right. <laughs> All right, daily you. And one thing I do, do with my kids now is I write a daily email every day and date it. Just, you know, saying, hey, you okay? Do you need anything? So that they can look back on this and kind of see what it was like day to day in this experience. So I hope this helps. The biggest message, everyone, <laughs> is that quarantine schooling is not homeschooling. This is crazy schooling. <laughs> we all are crazy schooling right now. And pretty soon we're going to be on the other side of it. And so the goal is just to get through it. There's no perfect way to do this. There's no right way to do this. And it is all of us finding our way through it. And that's the important thing. Realizing that we're going to get through it. There will be an other side. And we will look back on this and go, <laughs> wasn't that crazy? In the meantime, this is Dr. J, who hangs out at D Nice's Quarantine Club on Instagram as much as possible. So I'll see you later, guys. Bye bye.